What's up, motivators? Welcome back. It's Kevin. This is Pure Bullfit. I wanted to take a little time out today to tell you guys about a brand new program I'm going to be releasing to the community. Free basic program, as always, called Pure Power Building. And I... What is that? It's the Athlean Alarm. Someone's calling out Cavalier. Quickly and mindlessly, we will spring to his defense, armed only with ad hominem attacks and my revolver of righteous indignation. We will take on all comers who dare to question the brilliance of Jeff Cavalier. Or something like that. It's a total fabrication. It never happened. It never happened. This one was invented by a writer. Not this time. It never happened. All right, I admit that was a bit silly, but honestly, that is how some members of the Fitfluencer fitness community would have you see me. As some sort of thoughtless, nut-hugging sycophant for Jeff Cavalier, mindlessly supporting whatever it is that he says. And the position of this channel has always been that critique is good, that peer review is necessary, especially in this industry, which is so rife with misinformation and bullshit. And it just so happens that we have two videos from two very different people talking largely about the same subject in regard to Jeff Cavalier. They perfectly illustrate exactly what I'm talking about. The kind of critique that is necessary, respectable, moves the conversation forward, presents new ideas, and doesn't resort to misinformation, misleading, misunderstanding, or outright lying in order to get the job done. The two videos that we have for you today are from Omar Isof and Greg Doucette. Now, they come from kind of two different worlds. We've got uh, Omar Isof, who is uh, predominantly a power lifter. He's done some Olympic weightlifting. He does general fitness. He's been a content creator on YouTube for a very long time. And Greg Doucette, I've only recently become aware of some of his videos, and that's largely due to people in the community recommending that I go and I check him out. But he's into uh, bodybuilding. He's an enhanced athlete. And we'll touch more on that in a little bit. And I've linked both of those videos down below, and I encourage you guys to go ahead and watch them. It might be 20 total minutes out of your day, and they're both individually worth a watch. On the one hand, we've got Omar, who is talking about training philosophy and uh, asks the question whether or not somebody should try and stay as lean as Jeff Cavalier year-round. So the first video is talking about training philosophy, but it does mention one of the very same things that Greg Doucette mentions. Omar says, as a natural lifter himself, a lifetime natty, or three out of five, you know, if we're rounding up, that he believes that what Jeff has achieved with his body is attainable through hard work, consistent training, proper nutrition, and dedicating uh, yourself to what you're doing. But it's important to note that his statement on that wasn't definitive in any way. He very much left room open for interpretation for one to come away from that feeling that it would be extremely hard to achieve what Jeff has which makes it likely that he's not doing it naturally. Now, Omar didn't say anything to that effect, but one could interpret that from his statements. That is something that someone could object to if they wanted to. But honestly, I think that that's a reasonable statement. The only person that Omar can speak to whether or not they are natural or enhanced is Omar. And he states that quite clearly. The focus of his video was mainly on the philosophy of approaching life, trying to stay that lean and accomplish other goals. And he talks a bit about the phases of life that you go through, and I think he makes an absolutely excellent point. We all go through phases of what we're trying to achieve, and apparently at this point in Jeff's life, he very much appears to be not trying to get bigger and stronger. He is trying to remain athletic. He's trying to remain lean, and therefore his training and nutrition are suited to those needs, but that's not necessarily for everyone. And if you try to stay that lean, you're going to leave things on the table as far as performance, possibly, and most certainly strength. And those are considerations that you have to have, particularly if you are a young lifter. Omar talks about that for about five to eight minutes. And I think it's a good video. I think that he manages to disagree with someone who has a much larger presence than he does. He does so knowledgeably, and he does so from his position of experience, which he has every right to speak on. Now, Greg's video speaks to many of the same topics from the other end of the spectrum as an enhanced, experienced bodybuilder. He weighed in on whether or not he thinks that Jeff Cavalier is natty or not. And he said the very same thing that Omar did. With dedication to your nutrition, with a lot of hard work and good genetics, you can achieve what Jeff has achieved and maintain it year-round. But one of the important things to note is that neither of them spoke definitively on the subject because neither of them are in a position to. They shared their professional opinions from their individual places of experience. One, a lifetime natty lifter, and the other, an openly enhanced bodybuilder. And they both came to roughly the same conclusion. Yeah, totally possible. 
could totally do it. It would be really freaking hard though. And they're gonna let you do the rest of the interpretation, your own investigation, draw your own conclusions. That is responsible critique. Present information from your position of knowledge. You don't have to tear somebody down or say they don't know how to do their job, aren't a strength coach when they have credentials to the contrary, call them a pussy or any of the other idiotic drivel that the people who are calling me a nut hunger resort to in order to attack the credibility of a man who just happens to be more successful than they are. Ugh! But I'm a clout-chasing bodyguard. What I'm supposed to be doing is creating drama with these larger channels in order to ride their coattails to more relevance and success. I'm supposed to be creating friction and tension and controversy so I can drive comments, likes, and clicks. Man, I'm really bad at my job. What did you say? Look, I actually believe in professional peer review and critique. They're necessary functions of our profession when done by professionals. We should be saving the vitriol and the anger and the insults for the people who are actively trying to take advantage of others. The Tom DeLauers, the Jim Stepanis, the Joel Seedmans who are pretending that they can reinvent all of fitness and charge you exorbitant prices for it. To sell you supplements that you don't actually need. Okay, maybe you'll say I won't call out Omar because I've openly said that I like him. And I do, because he's down to earth, a genuine human being, actively tries to help people, he's very engageable, puts out great content. What's not to like? Well, how about Greg Doucet? I don't give a deuce about Doucet. Let's be honest here, he is an enhanced bodybuilder and that is, as a content consumer, has no relevance to any of my interests. I'd never heard of him before people in the community started telling me that I should check out his videos. I have no interest in ever competing in a bodybuilding show. I have no interest in ever becoming an enhanced athlete. So why would I care what he thinks? I don't. But the video he put out, regardless of the quality or content of his other videos, how legitimate his other critiques may be, this one was perfectly legitimate. It was perfectly okay to say, no, Jeff, you're not 5% body fat and this is why. It was perfectly okay for Omar to say, I don't think that people should be trying to train like you through all the phases of their life. They're going to leave strength on the table. They're going to perhaps leave some sort of performance on the table if they do it this way. If they try and stay as lean as you are throughout their life. At the end of the day, there are thousands upon thousands of professionals, some good, some bad, some completely useless. And we're going to have differing opinions. Not everybody's opinion is equal, and they're not all valid. But just because somebody disagrees with your methodology or your philosophy doesn't mean that they're entirely wrong or that you're wrong for disagreeing with them. I think that we should encourage these conversations. My problem is with the folks who misrepresent, misunderstand, misinform or outright lie about the body of work of somebody else in order to seem more legitimate, in order to seem like they have a point, in order to create an argument that they can argue against. And it's especially egregious when those individuals show through their actions that they don't really care what they can do for their community. They really only care about what their community is gonna do for them. Now, a lot of these folks would try and say the same thing about me, but good luck with that because I run a free community that puts resources out there free of charge. Basic programs covering recomposition, weight loss, 10 week peak if you're looking at powerlifting. And the new power building program that I'm testing out right now, I'm gonna talk a little bit about my methodology and my philosophy. I put these resources out there because I don't think that finances ultimately at the end of the day should be a barrier between somebody who has the desire, the motivation to get fit and all they lack is a little bit of that green. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about some announcements and that brand new program. The first thing I want to let you guys know is I have shut down the Patreon. I explained already to the members of Patreon, I shut it down because it was growing. That might sound odd, but I was never comfortable with it to begin with. We started a Patreon originally because members of the community said that they wanted to contribute before the channel was monetized. And they have been very supportive and some of the things that we've been able to do with this channel are only because we had that support. However, it required me, and this is why I was uncomfortable with it, it required me to pay gate, even if only for a week, certain content to justify having a Patreon at all. I had to offer something to them, and that was, honestly, when you get down to it, a little counter to the entire purpose of Pure Bullfit to begin with. And I really don't want to needlessly be taking anybody's resources. If you were a member of Patreon, I want to thank you so much for your support. But you're going to receive all the same information you would have there, here just along with everyone else. I really appreciate everything that you've done for me, and I really look forward to the great things that we're gonna be able to do moving forward. 
And speaking of great new things, I want to talk to you about a great new program that we're going to be providing to the community, Pure Power Building. Why power building? Well, I just finished doing AX1 from Athlean X. I said that I was going to do an Athlean X program after I finished the Athlean X Live uh, in, I think it was July. It was the end of July. And I surprisingly gained a lot of strength across the board. Yep, sure, increased athleticism. I got a little faster. All the things that you would expect off an athleticism program. But my main compound lifts went up as well. So it was clear that I was addressing some uh, compensatory strength issues, that I was uh, addressing some power generation issues that I hadn't previously through my previous style of training, predominantly powerlifting. I was obsessed with the idea that by 40, I was going to hit a 1,500 pound total. I didn't make it. But you know what? I've grown. I've matured. It's no longer my goal. I still love heavy lifting and I want to be as strong as I can. Now, power building is not a new concept. I did not invent this. I'm not claiming credit for the idea, but it fits my goals. I want to get stronger than I am, but I also want to look good. And this is a way to meet both demands. Max out neither, but have a good marriage of both. So I've got a little bit of footage here where I'm going to share with you the basic methodology that I'm going to use to pursue both of those goals as best as I can. And then within one or two weeks time, I will finish polishing the program and I will deliver it to the community through the Facebook site. So, all right, guys, what you see here is fairly simple, but the beauty is in the simplicity. We're going to be focusing on the power half of the program to start each workout. That's going to be focusing on the overhead press, the bench press, the back squat, or the deadlift to generate strength. Our working sets are going to be four total working sets of five reps, five reps, three reps, and three reps with the possibility of adding a fifth set of three reps, depending on how this testing phase goes. Now, it might surprise some of you that I'm using five reps because you recently heard I made a video about how five reps aren't magic. They're not. I specifically said they're great for strength, and that's what I'm using them for. Now, our last working set is going to be Wendler 531 style, where you do as many reps as possible with the given weight. And we're going to use that information in the subsequent week to determine whether or not we stay where we're at. We go up in weight or we go down in weight. And we typically add increments of five pounds for a slight progressive overload workout to workout, if possible. Now, you'll see here that I got 350 pounds by four, and you might say, okay, we're going to go up. But I'm actually going to stay exactly where I was at this week because that last rep, as you'll see here in a minute, was a real grinder. And I just don't feel like I've made the necessary adaption to justify the extra weight, however small it may be. Immediately after our last working set, we're also going to do two back off sets at 65% of the weight we lifted for our last working set. That is the beginning of our volume. Now, there is one more element to this. We do predominantly time and attention and volume training for the various body parts that we'll hit on a given day after the power exercise, but there is one other element, and that last element is speed training. Now, I was reading recently in an article by Greg Knuckles and crew, either in Mass or in his newsletter, Stronger by Science, I'm not sure which one it came out in, that individuals who trained speed or explosiveness 48 hours, up to 48 hours prior to trying to lift heavy weight, either for one rep max or a heavy training session, performed better. Now, I don't know what that mechanism is. It could be greater motor neuron recruitment. It could be your uh, central nervous system or your muscles are somehow primed for it. But I intend to find out. I, I intend to put it to the test to see if it is a useful tool in this program. And if it is, if it helps us prepare for the heavy lifting that we're going to do on the subsequent day, then I will include it in the program. And if it doesn't work, I will scrap it before you guys ever see it. And the methodology that we will use for that speed explosiveness training is 10 sets of two reps as fast and explosive as possible while maintaining good form. So if you want access to one of those free basic programs, stop by, join the Facebook group, even if you only stop by long enough to go ahead, download the programs and go on your merry way. They are free to all. They are free resources for you to use and I hope they help. So as you guys can see, the basic methodology is pretty easy to follow. We start with a heavy compound movement. We train for strength and we follow that up with time under tension and volume to incite hypertrophy. These are not complicated concepts. But if what you want is it spelled out for you, if you want is a simple guide to follow, somebody to arrange it for you, that's why I make these programs, guys. That's why I put them out for free. But if that's not enough and what you need is direct coaching, daily contact, weekly video chats, 
programming, nutritional advice, all wrapped up in one convenient price. You can check out the link below for the damn collective coaching. I am a proud member of the coaching staff. I am happy to assist people in that capacity. We try and keep it reasonable. We definitely provide a lot for the price. So if that's what you're looking for and you want to work with me specifically, that's where you can find me. All right, guys, that's it. That's the video for today. I highly encourage you to check out the videos that I linked below from Omar Isaf and Greg Doucette. They are great examples of how professionals review the body of work of their peers. Let's save the vitriol, the insults, the ad hominem attacks for the people who really deserve it. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and let me know. Hit that like button. If you didn't like the video, what the hell are you still doing here? If you want to see more of this content and you're not yet subscribed, you know what to do. Also, hit that notification bell while you're at it. Get notified of all the videos as they come out. We got some pretty damn cool things coming up, not least of which is a collaboration with Scott Herman Fitness on his Insta Gabbage series. So look for that later this week, I think. I'll keep you guys updated in the community page. I will see all of you guys in the next video. And until I do, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and go fit yourself. Jeff, get down!